Hi everyone, and welcome to Application Delivery How-To Series. Uh, my name is Artem, and today we are going to take a look how to take a generic server and make it an AVI load balancer. Uh, so, due to AVI scalable fabric, it can be deployed in virtual environments with horizontal scaling with multiple service engines hosting the same virtual services. Uh, however, uh, we can scale vertically uh, by deploying AVI on a bare metal Linux server. Uh, we can install controller, service engine, or both at the same time. Uh, in this case, AVI leverages the raw horsepower of the underlying hardware, skipping the virtualization layer. Uh, so this, uh, the service engine will take ownership of a data path physical interfaces. Uh, it can be a single NIC, like ETH1 here, or a port channel, like BON0. Uh, it can also be possible to create a VLAN interfaces, uh, which, were, which I will demo a little bit later. Uh, NICs can be 1 gig, 10 gig, or even 40 gig card. And as for the management, it can share a card with a Linux layer going through a Docker 0 interface, uh, but you can also use an inbound, inbound management, which will share it with, uh, with the data NICs. Also, AVI take advantage of a TPDK, which allows the AVI application to access NICs directly, skipping the Linux kernel level entirely, which will significantly boost the performance. Um, so, AVI controller installs a service engine on a bare metal server through a Linux cloud connector. Uh, it uses SSH to copy Docker image and actually start the service. Uh, so, let's actually look at the configuration. First, we have to create a Linux cloud connector. We go infrastructure, clouds, create a Linux server. We put in the name, select the Linux cloud connector and click next. I actually already created it to save some time. So inside of it, we just have to select an SSH user on a remote server, and then we'll add our server. Uh, we just put in the IP address. Uh, we'll select DPDK, yes or no. Usually you should shoot yes, but I'll select no because my lab is actually virtual machines. We could select inbound management, yes or no, to use a separate uh, management interface or use a, uh, a data nix. We could limit the amount of core it will use. We could li limit amount of memory uh, and just click save. So what will it do? It will use SSH to connect to this remote server and deploy the service engine in a Docker container. There are prerequisites for the remote server, like Docker has to be installed, and there are a few other requirements, which you can read on our KP site. So let's look at the status. It's actually starting. All right, after a few minutes, we can see that the status is ready and the service engine is connected and operationally up. So let's take a look at the actual service engine, select the cloud, and we can edit it. And here we would see the actual interfaces uh, that is on Linux will also be shown here. And AVI service engine will take direct ownership of that Nix uh, using DPDK, entirely skipping the Linux layer. Also, we could configure the actual VLAN interfaces, for example, on a bond, which is our other channel. Select the VLAN 100, put in the address, whatever. Click, uh, oops. let's say, 1000, and uh, let's save. And now let's look at the Linux. So first, uh, let's see the Docker image. Avi copied the service engine on this Linux box. Let's see if it's actually running. Yes, it's running for two minutes. 
and let's look at the network configuration. So as you see, Avi created a sub-interface uh, with VLAN 1000. So we can have our Azure channel with multiple VLAN interfaces as well. All right, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and please check out our other videos in Application Delivery How-To Series.